Hey everyone, it's James here from the Dev Genie Academy and welcome back to the 3D Java game engine series. And in this episode, we're going to be looking at the directional light. But before we get to that point, we do need to do a bit of extra things. So first of all, let's get straight to it and create a new package called lighting and let's create a directional light class. So in this class, it's fairly straightforward. It's a vector 3F of color, direction. We need a private float of intensity and also to make sure that that's private as well and let's create a constructor with the three variables so we can also now just do get us and set us for everything else and that should be pretty much done next up we can move across to our shader manager and we need to create a new uniform or create a directional light uniform that will take in a string of uniform name and of course it needs to throw an exception as well just in case there's any issues so we can call create uniform with the uniform name plus the dot color and the other two which is dot direction and also intensity after we've set that we now need to create a set uniform method so it's a public void set uniform again takes in a string of uniform name and we pass in a directional light directional light and then we can call set uniform that's set uniform with uniform name plus dot color and it's just directional light dot get color we can copy that two more times change the directional light to dot get direction and dot get intensity and don't forget to change these strings here as well to direction and intensity accordingly. Intensity, there we go. So moving on to our render management class, in the init method, let's create a uniform of specular power. So it's shader.create uniform with the uniform name of specular power. We can also create another uniform, which is our directional light uniform, which we call that directional light. Okay, so moving on to the render method, let's create an instance of the directional light into the parameters of the render method. And once we've done that, we can then call shader.setUniform of the specular power first. So that's specular power. We can create a constants variable of this by calling consts.specular power. So if we go to the consts class, we can create a new public static final public static final float of specular power and we'll make that equal to 10 F for now actually I want to move that up to the other floats there we go so specular power equals 10 F and now that should resolve the error that we've got on the render management class so next up we can now create the set uniform of the directional light so that's shader dot set uniform directional light and we can just pass in the directional light there to set those parameters. So moving on to the test game class, we need to create a few variables here. So the first one is a private float light angle. We need another private directional light of directional light. And in the constructor of test game, we can say light angle equals negative 90. And in the init method, let's create a local variable here of float light intensity. And that's going to be equal to 0, 0.0 f and then we can create a vector 3 f of light position and we can create that to be negative 1 negative 10 and 0 and we can also create another vector 3 f of light color and we'll just put that to 1 1 and 1 just to complete white and we can create an instance of the directional light here with light color light position and light intensity. Okay, and we're almost done now. So moving into the update method, let's just comment out that entity increase rotation method. And underneath there, we can then see light angle plus equals 1.05 F. Actually, let's do one, yeah, 1 1.05 F. If the light angle is greater than 90, then the directional light dot set intensity will be set to zero and if the light angle is greater or equal to 360 then we can say light angle equals 
negative 90. We'll reset that back. So we can now do if light angle is less than or equal to negative 80, or the light angle is greater or equal to 80. So if that's the case, then we can create a new float of factor, and this needs to equal of 1, negative, and I cast this to a float because we need to do math.abs, and that's abs of light angle, and that needs to be negative 80, and that needs to divide by 10.0f. So now we've got our factor, actually we don't need to cast a float, so now we've got our factor, we can now do a directional light dot set intensity to the factor and we can then do directional light dot get color dot y is equal to math dot max of factor and 0.9f we can also copy that as well and change the color of the z component too and we can change that to 0.5f so if that's not the case we can create one final else bracket and that's going to be directional light dot set intensity to one and directional light dot get color dot x equals one y equals one and z equals one so what we've created here is a very basic if very yeah very basic day night cycle but we can also do a double of angle radiance which is math dot to radians of light angle and we can set directional light dot get direction of x to equal math dot sine of angle radiance and we cast that to a float. We can also copy that as well and we can change the direction of y to math dot cosine as well. So that should be a basic day night cycle in place. And all we need to do in the render method just add the directional light to the function. Okay and that should be it for the Java code. So now moving into our fragment shader we can now create a new structure of the directional light and again that just passes in the three variables we've already created which is a vector 3 for the color, a vector 3 for the direction and a float for the intensity. There we go. So we need to create two new uniforms here, a uniform of float of specular power, so uniform float specular power and our uniform for the directional light as well. There we are. So our vector four of ambient C, we need to create two more functions from this, or two more variables from this. It's diffuse C and specular C. And with those now we can then change the setup colors method to where it should be in the first place. So diffuse C equals ambient C and specular C equals ambient C as well. In the else method that we can just delete that out because that was just to get us around the variables not being used. Ambient C equals material dot ambient. Diffuse C equals material dot diffuse. Specular C equals material dot specular. And moving on to the directional light stuff now we can create a new function of void calc light color. There's a few parameters that we need for this, but this is going to be used for our directional light, our point light, and our spotlight. So we need a vector 3 of light color, a float of light intensity, a vec 3 of position, and a vec 3 of to light direction, and finally a vector 3 of normal. So in this method we can do a vec 4 of diffuse color, and we'll instance that just to an empty vector 4 of four zeros. We can copy that and create another empty vector 4 of specular color. There we go. And now we can create the diffused lighting first. So let's create a float of diffuse factor. And this is going to equal a function of max of the dot notation of the normal, the two light direction, and 0, 0.0. And we can create the diffused color to equal the diffused diffuse C multiplied by a vector 4 of light color and 1.0. That needs to be multiplied by the light intensity and also by the diffuse factor as well. So now that the diffused lighting is done we can move on to the specular light. First of all we need to make a vector 3 of camera direction and we can make that equal to normalize of negative position. 
Make sure that's negative position on that one. We can also create a vector 3 of from light direction. And that basically just does an inverse of the to light direction. So that's vector 3 from light direction equals negative to light direction. We can create another vector 3 of reflected light. And this equals the normalize of the reflect function. And that passes in two values of the from light direction and the normal. We can create a float of the specular factor here with the function of the max the max function and the dot notation inside and we pass in the camera direction the reflected light and we can also pass in 0.0, .0 as the final parameter of the max so our specular factor now equals the power function or P POW of specular factor and also specular power and finally to complete the specular light we can do spec color equals specular C multiplied by light intensity multiplied by specular factor, multiplied by material dot reflectance, and multiplied by a vector 4 of light, color, and 1. And all we need to do now is return our diffused color plus our specular color. So diffused color plus specular color. And now all we need to do now is in our main method, oh, I actually also need to make sure that we do a void, not void, and we do vector 4. We now need to create a little mini function which is going to be a vector for of calc directional light and this passes in the directional light of light the vector 3 position and also the vector 3 normal and all this is going to do is return the calc light color we've just created so it returns calc light color of light dot color and light dot intensity position and we can call the normalize method, which is light dot direction, normalize light direction. And finally, we can pass in the normal there as well. So into our main method, we can create a vector for of diffuse specular comp. Diffuse specular comp. There we go. And that's going to equal calc light direction. I'm just going to copy that through because my typing is a bit bad at the minute. So calc light direction of directional light, fragment pos and fragment normal. And all we need to do now is in our frag color, we just multiply what's in there currently by the diffused specular component. And that should be pretty much everything that we need to do for the directional light. So if we go ahead and run this application now, we can see the light is moving from the left hand side of the screen across to the right and it will fade to black with our ambient light showing and the cycle should reverse indefinitely giving us the impression of a somewhat day night cycle so thanks very much for watching everyone i hope you enjoyed and i'll see you next week thank you